Hey, let's talk about why social media might not have worked for you and how to really increase your accounting business owner salary slash income. So I want to kind of start off by just saying like, you know, social media is, is a very like powerful but misunderstood element of our business that most people just it's like it's very easy when you know what to do because it's very repetitive and it's very consistent it's just if you don't know what you're doing then it becomes very challenging confusing and overwhelming right so i kind of want to break down some myths i want to make it a little bit easier for you to be able to do it in my end of this video you're going to understand exactly like why people aren't really finding value in your content why you don't really have a lot of people watching your views and watching your content and how to actually get people to care about it after they've seen it for x number of times so first and foremost if you want some help growing your business maybe you watch some of these other videos and you just for whatever reason you need to you want to get some help right maybe even trying to do it or maybe you're thinking about starting a business but you just want to avoid mistakes right because you understand like you can always get money back but you can't get time back that's the one thing that we never get back and you know as far as i know you know we only get one shot at this life so you might as well make sure that we can go and do it to the best of our ability and really reach our dreams so if you want some help growing go ahead and click on the link inside the description either above or below the video book a call with me to see if i can help you out now into the video okay so Number one, okay, there's two prongs of social media. There's messaging and there's content. Now when I say messaging, I mean like literally inside the direct messages, right? When I say content, I mean whether it's video content, whether it's written content. For majority of people who are watching this are gonna probably like doing written content because it's, in the beginning, it's easier to kind of do and it's less intimidating, right? Because some people don't really like themselves on video, some people don't like, um, you know, hearing their voice on video, maybe you just don't have a lot of confidence in the way you speak or you present, right? So written content is just a little bit easier to start it becomes a pain in the neck the longer you have to do it i'll tell you a little bit why um as we kind of go through that but two prongs of attack so i like using messenger to kind of move the relationship forward towards getting on the consultation call but i like using content to move the messenger conversations forward or to even like skip messenger conversations altogether by informing them on like how to do it so first things first your content if you are having trouble getting people to want to book a call with you that means that the content you're putting out is not really delivering much value so whenever people are posting on social media they they really think that um you're going to post content that people are going to want to just work with you out of, out of the blue now it is like that, but it's, it's the way that you go and get people to actually like care about you, know you exist, and want it to work is something that you have to kind of think of, right? So it doesn't all just work in a vacuum. It's not just posting content and hoping people will see it, right? So I'm going to talk about how to go post content, but in the next step I'm going to talk about is how to actually get the right people to see it. So first things first is to go in and talk about like, you know, what is value? So value can be either education, it can be entertaining, it could also be informing, it could also be creating a bond or relating to the person, right? So educating, most most bookkeepers and most accountants, they try and do like um, posters like 10 reasons why you need like a bookkeeper. And there's nothing inherently wrong with that post depending on who you're speaking to, right? So you have to first know who you're speaking to. Are you speaking to business owners that are just getting started in business? Because that's who that's really going to attract, right? Because they don't really know. Versus someone who's been in business for, you know, three, five, ten years, they probably know why they need a bookkeeper because their CPA has probably been telling them that for like the last three to five years. So they probably know that. It's just like a matter of like who are they actually going to select and who are they going to start working with. So if you're going to go after those bigger companies that are more established, you need to start having your messaging be more about like, you know, why they should work with you so the value inside of that is i would actually go and look at the types of business owners that you actually want to work with now if you've never worked with a business owner i'd probably go and maybe interview some business owners or talk to a business owner in your local area maybe if you go to like a church maybe a dance or a gym and start asking them different problems that are their accountant their cpa or the bookkeeper has kind of helped them overcome inside of their business now when you know these stories you know the different things they've done you guys start writing about it to actually help business owners overcome these problems now the reason why we're helping business owners overcome problems because we are demonstrating in advance that we can actually help them. One problem that most people have is that they, they are afraid that if they are to give like free value or tell people exactly like what to do or how to get certain things going, they're not going to be able to get the people who want to work with them. And even for this YouTube channel, I had that thought too. It's like if I just put out a bunch of YouTube channels telling people exactly what to do to grow their business, it's like, you know, then no one's going to want to work for me in my mentorship program. And it's like, you know, I, I uh, paid 
It paid about thirteen thousand dollars for a program that showed me how to like even make YouTube videos like for, for this, right? And at that point, I was just like, I just spent too much money to kind of like not do what they were telling me. So it's like, okay, whatever, dude. Let's just do the 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 YouTube channel. Let's just kind of see how it goes. And, I mean, this this YouTube channel has been great, right? Because it's like you get referrals, people share it, people like follow, subscribe, they like they watch your content. It's just very very interesting to kind of see how it's like really really um been very positive, right? But it's the same thing, right? Because if you're giving people tips, oftentimes the people that want to work with are people who don't want to do it themselves or who want to do it faster or who want to, like, they just don't have the skill set to do it. Even if they could do it themselves, they don't want to do it themselves. They want to work with someone, right? So that's why you put out this valuable content so it gets people to actually, like, want to work with you specifically. Now, the valuable content also makes it easier for when you message people for them to actually respond to you, respond favorably, and actually carry on the conversation. Sometimes what happens is like if you have no content out and you try and message people, they're just like, who is this person? Can they even help me? I know nothing about them and I have to make a split decision. And most times when people have to make like a split decision, they choose like no, right? Because no is a lot safer. Most people who are either like, yeah, most people just like want to go with the safest option. That's not always the best, right? Because oftentimes like success on the other side of your comfort zone right but most people their first instinct is to say no so if you have content out and they're actually watching and they're getting value they're going to not say no as frequently right or their no will be more of a not right now it's not a permanent no so it makes it easier and step number three i'm going to talk about like how to actually turn those not right nows into actual clients so that's gonna be cool as well right so you have to make sure that you're having the value inside of the content now if you don't really understand what value is go ahead and write down in the comment section um content i actually made a post on facebook probably about six months ago that goes in depth about like what are the different types of content you can post on social media whether it's video or whether it's written it doesn't really matter it's the same concept for both of them um you can start utilizing so go ahead and write content down inside of the um youtube comment section if you're watching this on youtube and i'll be sure to have either myself or my assistant send to you when we get some time Cool. Next thing is no views. Okay. So no views is like, maybe you have like friends and family or maybe they're getting like 50 likes a, a post, right? Which is cool. But if the business owners who you actually want to work with never see your post, it doesn't matter how many likes you get, right? So the first thing first is you need to start building your audience with business owners that can actually afford to pay you what you're worth. I like doing that by going on like platforms like LinkedIn, right? Now LinkedIn allows you to be able to set certain search criteria when you're building your network to go after business owners that are inside of a certain amount of money, certain industries, certain revenue levels, et cetera, certain number of um, employees, type of employees, just everything that you need to actually go and like develop and hand pick a well-crafted network. Now this is going to actually be led with the um with the messaging side right because you have to send a connection request you need to start building that relationship in order to get the people to start watching that content right so that's kind of the missing key most people don't have the content they're posting content religiously right like every single day maybe they spend like one to two hours like making the content or thinking about the content and then they finally put it out but they get crickets right it's because you don't have enough of the right people now Picking the right person, that is like, that is a skill set. Like, I'm not going to lie, it is a skill set and you will have to go and develop it over time. But once you learn how to develop it, or if you watch like some of these videos, or if you have help doing it, right, then it gets very easy. But then next, you have to make sure you have a really good messenger script so that you're actually building a relationship with someone so they actually want to, to go through your content, right? Because it's one thing for you to just like send out connection requests and be like, hey, do you want to work with me? It's like, that's cool, but you're really going to lose a lot of like potential buyers because people don't, don't just want to be sold to. They want to feel like you either care or there's a relationship or there's something that um, makes you different than everyone else. Like you don't, the last thing you want is for you to get on a consultation call and the person asks, well, how are you different than everybody else? You actually want them to come into the consultation call knowing that you're different from everybody else. So number one, you do that by having a relationship inside the DMs and talking back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Then you get it by them actually going and reading and viewing and watching whatever your content is so they actually can see how you are different than that person. Right? And then once you have that happen, now it's a lot easier for them to get on the consultation call and actually trust you. Like for me, for example, I, I have a lot of consultation calls for both businesses, whether it's mentorship or whether it's accounting and the bookkeeping, right? And the business owner just come on, oh, wow, I've seen, I've seen a lot of your content. Or wow, you know, I've, I've heard a lot about you. Or your partner said, you know, you're really good at X, Y, Z, A, B, C, right? And those consultation calls are so easy because at the end of the call, you don't have someone saying that stuff. Um, 
<laughs> and it's just like the whole call is like, well, I know this about you, I know this about you, I know this about you, I know your favorite restaurant is X, right? And it's just like so much easier. You don't have to be like fighting with people, you don't have to try and convince people, right? If you ever see like any of our like testimonials from like our mentorship students and like how they're able to close sales at such high price point, it's because since they have this balance of both like content and the balance of like messenger, right? It's the person actually wants to work with you and you don't have to overcome a lot of these objections right it's just it's just way easier it's because they feel like they can trust you right and since they trusted you before the call it makes it easier for them to want to move and even if they have like maybe like some sort of price objection then it's just like it's a very like just weak kind of price objection right it's just more of like shock rather than they can't do it it's more it's like they need to take a step back maybe give them like three minutes just breathe with them sit there be like okay this is okay right and then they go another thing they do is that they do maybe ask you something like like a, a question right it's generally not a hard question or statement right so oftentimes what happens is if you're on the end of your consultation calls and the business owner like starts making statements I, I can't do this because of X, Y, Z, or you are too expensive. That's very hard to overcome versus at the end of the call, they're asking questions like, how can I make this work? Um, it's just more of a soft or like, yeah, like, like, Hey, you know, I really want to go with you. I've gotten like three or five quotes that are a little bit less than what your quotes are. Like, um, you know, no, why, why is maybe your quote a little bit, a little more expensive, right? It's more of like a question, but it's not like a hard statement where they're like, I don't want to do something. It's more like, how can I do something? Or please help me. Rather be like a convince me person, convince me jester. It's more of like a, hey, can you please just like, just help me understand this and rationalize this. It's just a much easier kind of conversation and a much easier person to get to, you know, move where you need them to move, right? And then next is going to be the third step. It's follow up, okay? So follow up is very important both on the messaging side and the content side. The content side is because on social media, most of your posts generally do not get seen by more than about five to 10% of your total, um, whether it's if you're on YouTube, it's subscriber list. If you're on Facebook, it's your friends or your, your page likes. If it's Instagram, it's your followers, right? You're not gonna get more than about 10% of views unless you have extremely great content or you're advertising. Like if you ever go on my Instagram, you see like some posts that are like, um, that are more of like really really high like over the number of like followers I have it's only because it's been either like advertised or it's been like boosted right now I boost my posts for a lot of different reasons um, but it's because of follow-up right so with follow-up it's a mixture of messaging as well as your content so for me I have a rule inside of my company for either my VAs or whoever's managing managing my content or managing my messenger right we do not not respond to people within like 15 days. So let's say that's that we've had a conversation and either like I stopped talking to the person or the other person started talking. We're searching inside of all of our spreadsheets and all of our like um, prospects to see, hey, who have we not spoken to in the last 15 days? If the person has not been spoken to in 15 days, we do our absolute best to go and like restart the conversation and see where that person's at and see if they're like in a better position to like take advantage of our, pro or our products and services. Right, it's the same thing with you guys. You guys need, to, even if you don't do like every 15 days, and let me be honest with you, like if you have under like 100, like um, 100 of these like followers and like 100 like uh, on your audience, right? You should be trying to contact them as much as possible and building these relationships as much as possible. Like for me, it's different because I have literally like 25 to 30,000 people that I have to like reach out to. That gets very challenging to do, right? So. Um, I still actually do a pretty good job of doing that. Now, if it's on social media platforms, some social media platforms like restrict your ability to actually message your followers. Um, they want you to kind of pay for it, and that's kind of why I run advertisements to like be able to extend that reach. Um, but if you're on, like if you're under like 200 um, followers, you're under 200 connections on LinkedIn, like you should be like developing a really strong relationship with that audience, right? Don't let don't let me with like 20,000, 30,000 followers. Um, be better at returning uh, messages to my followers than you are. Like you just can't have that. Okay. If if you're serious about growing your business, like this is the most important part. You need to have these relationships being built. Next thing is your content. So your content is also going to follow up with people as well, right? Because the more times they see your content, the more value they've been getting from you, which kind of goes back to that first thing. That's why I said it's not silos. It's not like one, two, three. It's more, it's all together, right? Everything is kind of like in circles and in phases that you need to have in order to make it work. So you need to have good value. You need to be getting views. You need to have follow-up. 
and then value views fall up, value views fall up, right? It just keeps like flowing and flowing and flowing and flowing, and then it starts growing upwards and upwards and upwards. And then pretty soon you're automatically making six figures per year because it's just like the reason why when you grow your business on social media the correct way it's very easy to maintain a certain income level is because you're you're never tapping into the full demand that you have for your services what that means is that let's say that there are okay so let's say that every single day you're growing your audience by about 10 people right now let's say that you start off with 100 qualified business owners that really want your help you're generally going to take on, we'll say like 10 clients, right? So let's say that your capacity right now is 10 clients. Now 10 clients, let's say that you're making like eight grand a month, right? Because the way we kind of price our, our services is doesn't need that many to go and get to like six figures, right? If your audience is still growing, then by the time you get to 200 followers, and if you still only, you know, only opened your doors for 10 clients, you now have an additional 10 to 20 clients kind of sitting inside your audience that keeps getting nurtured and nurtured and nurtured and nurtured. So let's say that one of your clients like leaves. Let's see, yeah, one of your 10 clients leaves. You have 20 other people that are kind of waiting there that are looking to get started, right? So now you fill that spot up, but now there's 19 business owners that are still like interested. And they keep learning more and learning more and learning more and learning more and learning more. And they're kind of like perpetually waiting in the wings for when you have an opening or an opportunity. So let's say that you lost you like like 10 of your clients. Okay, well you have 20 people or 19 people now, right? You have 19 people that are kind of sitting there waiting for you to open your door. So, oh hey, these other nine people just like stop, stop coming or whatever, right? So now boom, you fill it up right away, right? It might take you a week, might take you two weeks to go and get all those consultations done, right? But they're waiting and they're sitting there making, making sure that you are able to, um, making sure that you guys are able to have them as a client. Right? And it just keeps getting more and more and more and more. As long as you keep doing the stuff I'm talking about inside of these videos where your audience is growing and growing and growing and growing, you never have to worry about money again because it's very consistent and you have this audience. The thing online that's going to really help you is your audience. Now, it's the number of people in your audience. It's all as well as the intimacy with your audience, right? Now, the higher the number it is, it can be, to a certain degree, harder to get that intimacy number up. But if you understand how to do it, you're going to be very, very good. And blessedly for us, we have a recurring revenue type business, meaning that once you get a client, they're going to keep staying with you for a certain number of time. So it just it, everything just becomes way more consistent. Now, if, if I had known this when I got started, I would have been light years ahead of where I am now. Right. But lucky for you, you get to watch these videos on this channel for free and you get to go and learn these things that took me hundreds of thousands of dollars to learn, like like so much money to learn. Um, so much money to learn, both in trial and error, spending advertising dollars that didn't pan out, buying courses that taught me a bunch of stuff. So it's like, luckily for you guys, like I offer the mentorship program and it's only one course. You've consolidated my years of expertise, my years of like buying courses, trying things, trying advertising campaigns, and either working or not working, and it just makes it easier. So if you want some help and you want to skip a lot of this trial and error, go ahead and click on the link either above or below the video. Now keep in mind, I cannot accept everyone, okay? We work with a very, 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 um, it's a very controlled number of students in our mentorship program, right? Because the last thing I wanted to do was go and get like 50,000 people to join my program. I don't know anyone, everyone's just kind of a number. I want to make sure that if you join this program, you have the highest likelihood of success, and I want to make sure that I have a really good relationship with you, right? So for that reason, we only accepted between about 10 to 12 people per month. Um, and, you know, we, we get a pretty good amount of people booking a call every single week, every single month. So if for whatever reason it's not a good fit, we point you in the right direction or give you like some steps you can take so that when the time is right and, you know, you are a little bit better fit for our program, then we accept you in. So if you want to see if you qualify for the program, if you want to see if it'll be a good fit for you to work with us, go ahead and click on the link inside the description, either above or below the video. Book a call with me, see if I can help you out. Um, and I'd love to see you on the other side. If you're not quite ready for a call, that's A-OK -okay too. I'll see you inside the next video. Have a good one.